right, we're back. Uh, let's do it. Let's have the conversation. Israel Palestine. Um, it's been a little more than two weeks since the terrorist attack by Hamas, October 7th. And um, I know a lot of people have been reaching out and they're like, hey, when are you going to talk about this? When are you going to talk about this? I learned something in the Russia Ukraine war, uh, and uh, it confirmed this quote that exists. This quote is, uh, when the war starts, the truth dies. And I remember at the beginning of the Russia-Ukraine war, there's that great story of the uh, the ghost of Kiev. And I got like emotional watching videos about it. Like I remember almost tearing up about this man that gets in his plane after not serving in the military for 20 years. And he hits this guy and he starts taking out these Russian jets and the news was covering it. Every Instagram was covering it. There's YouTube stories about it. And then a week later, it turns out it's not true. And I think that we've learned that uh, you know when the war starts, the truth ends up dying, at least on our social feeds over the last few weeks. Mm -hmm. And the reason why I didn't knee jerk jump to you know saying, hey, let's let's talk about this and give our opinion and stay at one. We're obviously fucking comedians. We're not going to solve a geopolitical crisis that's been going on for seventy fucking years. But also because we're reacting emotionally to these things that we don't know exactly if they're true or not. Right. Right. Like, and. I mean, you saw it. You even see it with the hospital bombing. Like we, to this day, still don't know exactly what the fuck happened. Yeah. You know, both sides are obviously claiming the other side. Both sides are obviously using tons of propaganda to support their positions. And I think that what a lot of people are going through over the last couple of weeks, uh, especially people who are like one... Um, one 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 bit removed from it. Like obviously, if you're Israeli, you're Jewish, you're locked in your passion. If you're Palestinian, you're locked in your passion. But those of us who aren't either, I think what we've been going through is just like, what the fuck is true? Yeah. What the fuck is going on? Mm -hmm. Like I'm getting all this information on my feed and I'm reacting to it. And then I'm finding out two hours later, oh, that was actually a picture from Kosovo. And you're like, what, what is, what is happening here? And uh, I think, I think it took some time and I just want to like talk to some Jewish friends. I want to talk to some Palestinian friends. I just want to understand what both uh, groups were feeling. And um, I understand now how unbelievably isolating it is to be both of them in this scenario. So like, let's just take, for example, the Jews, right? You're a Western Jew. You're raised your entire life with the with your history, with the stories of your victimization and your oppression, right? Jews have been kicked out of every single fucking country they've ever been in. I mean, like literally you go to a country, even on this, this tour, I'd be doing some research of the city we're in. And then I just come across the date that the Jews were kicked out. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh shit, King George did it to the fucking Jews in the year 1000 or whatever in England. I didn't even know that happened. It, like every single country. So you're, you're listening to this information. You're as a Western Jew, you're hearing about it. Um, Your grandparents, you probably have grandparents who survived the Holocaust. 100%. Who tells you about it. 100%. The, people are going to try to exterminate us. 100%. They're telling you this constantly. They're telling, hey, you're different. And just to let you know, it could happen again. We got to be very careful. You got to be on your P's and Q's. And you're a Western Jew that grows up in fucking New York. You grew up in LA or something. And you're like, I'm just American. Yeah. I'm like a white kid from America. What are they talking about? Like you hear about the anti-Semitism that will pop up sometimes, but you're like, I'm American. This is my parents. That was like my parents' time. And then October 7th happens, um, disgusting act of terror from Hamas, terrorist organization um, in, uh, uh, in Gaza and uh, kills over a thousand Jews. And you think the reaction is gonna be empathy and sympathy and concern for you and what your people just went through, this disgusting act. But all of a sudden you see the next day, there are like people in the streets seemingly like excited about it. Mm -hmm. And there are sections, there's not everybody, but there are people that are like chanting Horribly anti-Semitic things. Yeah, truly anti-Semitic things. Hundred percent. And that's not everybody, of course, but there are, there not. are documented sections sections of the people that were but doing enough it. that it confirms. All of a sudden, that voice that you quieted your whole life because you're like, that's just my grandparents being crazy. You're like, holy shit, is it true? This is a worst case scenario. We are different. They, they are out us. for us. They do hate us, and they hate us because we're Jewish. That's the conclusion yes. that you would logically come to. They want to externalize. us. They want us gone, right? You hear these chants. So I understand what a Jewish person feels like in that moment, especially a Western Jewish person who is somewhat removed from the conflict. Obviously, everybody there has family members, family members who have lost their lives. You're aware of it, but you're living in the West, right? And you hear this thing and you're like, oh my God, it is true. It is true. We are different and people are out to get us. Shit, when we were in fucking 
uh, Amsterdam. Tell the story. You guys are walking around at night. Yeah, walking down the street, and then this dude like comes out to Dove, and he's just, like hammered walking through the streets of Amsterdam. And he just seemed like a regular dude. He was like fist bumping everyone, like being all fun. And he looks at Dove, and he's like, "Oh, where, where are you from?" And Dove was like, "Oh, Moroccan." And he's like, "Are you Jewish?" And he's like, "Yeah, I'm a Moroccan Jew." And he goes, "Oh, what do you think about what's going on?" And like gets in his face and like starts to like size him up. And Dove literally is just like, "Look, peace for everyone. We just want everyone to be happy. We love everyone." And he goes, "Yeah, we don't fuck with Israel around here." We, we don't fuck with Jews around here. Yeah, your and, kind isn't welcome here. Yeah, and, and kind and, isn't welcome here is where it gets like, oh, now it's hate. And then we all step in and we're like, bro, chill. What are you doing? And the guy's like hammered. He, he's fucking in a blackout. And he's like, see, typical Jew. You always run. Like, you always get other people to fight your battles. Typical Jew, blah, blah, blah. And then that was it. I'd never seen anti Semitism like that. Out in ever. the open. Yeah, just walking down the street in Amsterdam. Yeah, you see, you hear about it on a fucking Call of Duty. You know, yeah. you see it on comments, but you've never seen like the actual like yeah. hate and vitriol. And you could see how fucking isolating that must be if you're Jewish in that moment where you're expecting the sympathy and empathy of the world for losing over a thousand innocent people. We're not talking about like two armies colliding. We're talking about innocent people yeah. that have died. Like innocent yeah. people should never bear the yeah. cost of this ever. Still right? hostages and stuff. Still hostages to this day. And then you don't feel it. You're like, oh my God, I'm fucking isolated. And not only are they not giving you sympathy, some people are celebrating. Oh, exactly. And that's when I was reaching out to my Jewish friends. I was like, oh, I, I don't ever think I've acknowledged that anti-Semitism is a thing yeah. still. Because yeah. I think we see it like, now nah, you're white. Yeah. It's not like that for a sizable percentage of human beings. Also, not a majority, but enough that it's significant. Yeah. And also in the West, like you often see Jews and you're like, oh, they're doing well. They're making money. Yeah. They'll be all right. Yeah, it's yeah. like you guys are like, well, you guys are doing well. But it's like, it's like yeah, we, we go through racism too, but we're also struggling. You know what I mean? Like, so I don't think there is the same sympathy or empathy given to to yeah, Jews. Yeah. Like Def in, here in the West, it's like they'll call out anti-Semitism for it's like, oh, they own the banks or whatever. And like, yeah, you're like, give me that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, how do I get that oppressed? <laughs> yeah. So I understand that, right? And then you look at the Palestinian side. And I can also see how unbelievably isolated they and isolating it is for them where the only time they're ever talked about and their plight is ever discussed is when they're the terrorists. Yeah. So imagine how infuriating that is where every single day you're living, I guess, in an open air prison in Gaza. Yeah. Every single day there's an occupation. There are, it's not, this is not the first time buildings have been bombed. This is not the first time there have been Palestinians killed. Nobody's talking about it. Now they're talking about, and they're talking about you guys as terrorists, and rightfully Hamas, absolutely terrorist, disgusting act, nothing justifies it, nothing that happened before justify what happened to those innocent people right. in Israel, okay? Um, and, and, and an Israeli kid that's eight years old doesn't know what the fucking word occupation even means. There's yeah. no way you can justify the murdering of them, right? But I can understand why these Palestinians are like, the only time the media in the West ever talks about us is when we're terrorists. And what about our innocent people who got killed? What about our innocent people? You don't ever mention that. Mm -hmm. What about our innocent kids? Yeah. yeah. You know, what about what we go through on, yeah. a, on an everyday basis? Why are, do we not have humanitarian concerns for us at all? Where the fuck is it? Where's the attention? Where's yeah. the concern? It feels like nobody cares about you. That same feeling that the Jews felt on October 7th, mm. nobody cares about us. Yeah. They're feeling that nobody cares about us. And then when something does happen, when Hamas is this disgusting act of terror, not only does nobody care about us, now we're gonna label you all as terrorists. Mm -hmm. So we're already view, they're already like, hey, we're victims here. Now, not only are we not victims, you've stripped our victimhood, we're the oppressors? Yeah. While we're being oppressed? We're getting pushed off our land and then one action makes us oppressors and terrorists. This has been going on for decades. You guys haven't and, done anything. And when I saw this, and I'm talking to my Palestinian friend, I'm talking to uh, my, my Jewish friends, I've realized there's this like gigantic chasm that exists with this issue. First of all, the casuals, the people who are not involved in it, right? Let's say the us, we're still trying to figure out what the history of this is for the last 70. The average person doesn't even know, the, they hear these buzzwords, oh, settlements. I'm the average person, Occupation, I don't know. apartheid. They don't get along, they can't have a two-state. Like, they beat it, it. Yeah. That, that's, that's literally what it is, right? And then the people that are involved, every one of them has a cousin who died, a brother who died, a family member who yeah. was fucking died. So they are locked in, right? And I see this chasm, I'm like, I have to understand like what both sides are, are feeling, but most importantly, like what they're feeling about specific things. And the distance between both sides is so far, you would think there are two different conflicts. 
Yeah. Like if you speak to an Israeli or a Jew about this and you speak to a Palestinian, you'd be like, there's no way you guys are speaking about the same cup. If you open your social media, <laughs> it looks like two different. Two complete. Yep. Because like, for example, there's the word that you see thrown around all the time, Zionism, Zionism, this, this idea, this concept that there should be a Jewish state, right? Zionist is used as a pejorative. If you're Palestinian calling someone a Zionist, that is a negative word. Like you say, are you a Zionist, right? If you ask a Jewish person if they're a Zionist, they're just interpreting that as, do I believe that Israel should exist? Well, yeah, of course, I believe Israel should exist. But what does the state of Israel mean to a Palestinian? It means you're pushing me off my land, you're gonna keep taking away it my rights. It stands for the oppression, it stands yeah. for the occupation, right? It's like, it's like asking, it's like, I, I, I'm a patriot, I love America. <laughs> a Native American has a different interpretation of my patriotism. Yeah. My patriotism represents the eradication of their people and the removal of them from their land. So if a Native American asks me, am, are you a patriot? I go, hell yeah, I fucking love America. They're like, how could you love America? You're a terrorist to them. I'm, exactly. <laughs> As a black man, if I hear make America great again, I was like, wait, how far back? It, what, yeah. what, you know, what are you talking about? Literally that, 100%. And to them, a lot of them, it means, hey, we used to have manufacturing jobs. My parents used to have a job. That's the America I'm thinking about when I think make America great again. I'm not <laughs> thinking about you guys being subjugated, but obviously that's all y'all are thinking But how about. could you not think yeah. about Yeah, exactly. So it's even the support the troops thing, Mark. Mm -hmm. Like, break down that example that you had about the... Like, as an American, we're like, yeah, we support our troops. Yep. What does that mean to the places that our troops are yeah. oh, banging the troops, away at? Yeah, bomb the wedding that my uncle was at. All right, those are the troops you support? And you're like, well, that's not well, what I thought no, when you I, asked me to support the troops. I support the troops for risking their my lives. My brother-in-law, that's yeah. in the Navy. Like, yeah. I support him. Yeah, so the, the words that are a sense of pride for one side are the source of oppression for another. How can they even begin to have a conversation about what's going on if they can't even agree on the definition of a word and both of them are understandably right about it, mm -hmm. right? So, so far apart. Once I'm seeing like how far this chasm is, I'm like, what else is going on here? And I'm like, okay, the problem it seems like everybody's talking about currently right now is Hamas. How do we get Hamas out of Gaza, because if we could get Hamas out of Gaza, then Gaza could live free and everything would be good. It's, it's Hamas, this terrorist organization that's subjugating their people. And every Palestinian I've ever spoken to is like, yes, Hamas is horrible. Horrible, disgusting, absolutely disgusting what they did. And that terror attack is disgusting what they've done before. And it's disgusting how they've oppressed us within Gaza, right? Every single person I've ever spoken to, just like every single Jew I've ever spoken to is like, yeah, we want a two-state solution. We want them to be able to live free. We want to be able to live free. We don't want this at all. Every single um, Jewish person I've spoken to is like, we don't even want the settlements. Why are we keeping to the settlements? You're just aggravating this fucking situation. These people on both sides- Most don't like the Israeli government either. Bro, yeah. there was huge fucking, uh, like there was like riots and there was these huge protests in Israel before up to, for like six months up to October 6th about how divided the country was about, you know. I went to, I went to Israel with Weezy and almost everyone we spoke to, like and younger kids around our age, it's like yeah. all don't like the government. Exactly. And what Exactly, and I think it's probably no different for like American intervention strategies where it's like, I don't think that's representative of American sentiment. Yeah. Like I don't think if you ask the average American, like, yeah, we should fucking be in Afghanistan for 25 years, that's what we need. We'd be like, no, we're like so far removed from it. Yeah. But if you're an Afghanistan, if you're a person from Afghanistan, if you're a Afghani, Afghan. you're, if you're an Afghan, you're like, how could I separate you from your government? Mm. How, how can I? Like, it's your government that's doing this to yeah. me and you vote them in, right? Isn't it a democracy? And then you just They're claim like, ignorance? Fuck you. You're taking my rights, you're killing my family members and you're uh, somehow removed from that? No, fuck you, you vote these people yeah. in. And then, I mean, and there was this guy, Bassem Youssef, that was on uh, Pierce Morgan. He had this interview and he brought up an interesting point. He's like, people bring up this thing about Hamas all the time. Hamas is the issue. And he goes, there's no Hamas in the West Bank <laughs> and Israel continues to occupy, there's a apartheid state and they continue to expand these settlements. You can't tell me, he's, he's basically saying, what is the excuse for that? Hmm. Like what, why, why isn't there this dreamlike scenario over in the West Bank if there's no Hamas, if Hamas is the only issue? Mm -hmm. And I understand that frustration as well. Yeah. I understand that frustration for the Palestinian pe people who are like, hey, yeah, let's agree, let's get Hamas out of here, but where is the good faith? Show us the good faith that it will be different. How can I believe, if you're Palestinian right now, you're like, how can I believe it's gonna be a different scenario than the West Bank if we have the scenario without Hamas and there's still people that are living and struggling under the occupation? 
I get that frustration. Yeah. Israel needs to, to show that proof that with this scenario without Hamas, is it better? Of course, but are they still living? Is it still occupied? Is it still an apartheid state? Yeah. Mm-hmm. They need to prove that. They're the ones in control. They're the ones in charge. I think it's their burden of proof. Yeah. Don't you think? Mm-hmm. Yeah. But yeah, I don't think we're here necessarily to offer a solution, but just to empathize with the both sides that are. Yeah, there's no way we the could. Biggest thing that's lacking. Yeah. <laughs> across the board. Yeah. I think if both, and I, not geopolitically, but person to person, if both sides just acknowledge, yeah, man, what happened to you is fucked up. I think they would be way more receptive to hearing the other side. Mm. If Palestinians were like, hey, man, I understand a lot of people are anti-Semitic and that probably sucks. And historically, you have been oppressed. That sucks. Then I think Israelis would be like, yeah, also what's been happening to you guys doesn't justify the terror attack, but you were oppressed for decades, you know, in your own homeland. And that's fucked. I think, yeah. It's just just so hard, I imagine, for both sides to even begin to offer the olive branch when you feel like you're being stepped on. You know, it's like... Yeah, it's just, it's, look, again, like you said, we're not here to offer solution, but we are here to offer that observation that there is this gigantic chasm between both sides and even how they're interpreting the same, um, not only events, but reaction to those events. Mm -hmm. You know, like I I I can't even imagine the frustration you must feel if you're Palestinian. And there's not a peep about anything you're going through until your side commits an act of terror. Mm -hmm. And I cannot even imagine the frustration of Jews that innocent Jews, a thousand of them are fucking murdered and there are people in the streets seemingly like supportive of it. Really, really like, uh, chanting yeah. some crazy things. And yeah. Like, yeah. Fuck. Yeah. And we're not even bringing in like the geopolitical chess moves that are being made outside of their situation. Yep. How this is really a proxy in a lot of ways yeah. for what other countries are trying to either stop or how other countries are trying to bring attention away from certain things. Like Russia has everything to gain from America putting money into this struggle, from America bringing warships into this struggle. You know, what happens if we start pulling money away from Ukraine mm-hmm. and that support? And Russia takes that immediately. So if I'm Russia, I want to bolster this as much as I possibly can, fan that flame. Mm-hmm. If you're Iran, Iran, Saudi Arabia and Israel were about to sign a deal that they were going to be friends publicly. First time, I think, in history. If I'm Iran, I'm like, I can't let that happen. I got to do something right here. I have to support something that's going to make Israel behave in a way that's going to make Saudi Arabia not able publicly to sign some sort of agreement or accords with them because they have to save face. Mm -hmm. It's, yeah. yeah. And like most wars, rich and powerful people will probably benefit and poor innocent people will probably suffer. Yeah. 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 Yeah, it is just, anyway, it's super tragic. And uh, I know a lot of people were asking us to to talk about it. And I'm sure that we'll continue to. I mean, but um, I think it was important for us to like take a moment and really digest what was going on so we could be thoughtful about it. You know, a lot of people reach out, hey, you need to talk about Palestine. You need to talk about Israel. You need to show your support. You need to show your support. And it's like, what they're really saying is, you need to echo my feelings. And that's not what we have to do. Right, we have to look at this, digest it, and you know, talk about it in a way that we feel uh, represents our feelings mm-hmm. yeah. on it, and is most honest. Yeah, I think the thing we can all agree on is that what's happening over there is tragic. Yeah, like the killing of innocent people is horrible. This is yeah, on both sides, no justification yeah. for it. Yeah, and if we miss something, don't kill us. You know, we just want peace. Yeah, a hundred percent, and I hopefully that. Yeah, hopefully that will be uh, shit, man. At this moment, at this point, I'm like, yo, just st- cease fires. Please, like, yeah, please, yeah, please. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, it's so tricky. So, um, yeah, hopefully, you know, hopefully uh, we get that, and then we get, you know, some sort of pause on this. It feels like that's the only thing that's been happening over the last seventy years. It's just pause and pause, and pause, and. Um, but yeah, at a certain point in time, at a certain yeah, at a certain point in time, something needs to something needs to happen. I don't know what that is. I don't even know how you begin to I solve don't, a situation like yeah. this. Yeah, I don't think we're gonna we're gonna solve it. Right yeah. Now. Yeah. Well, guys, um, that's going to be the end of the episode. Uh, thank you guys so much for tuning in. Uh, we appreciate you guys, and uh, yeah, hopefully. 
Hopefully we get some resolution soon. Hopefully we get some peace soon. And bare minimum, hopefully we get ceasefire soon. So all these innocent people's lives can uh, cannot be taken away. God bless.